Hello my friends, welcome back to Keto in the Chaos. My name is Tammy and on this channel I like to share all my tips and tricks on how I lost 200 pounds without bariatric surgery and how you can be successful on your own weight loss journey. So if that's what you're looking for, don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring the bell for more videos like this one to inspire you to get started. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I know it has been a hot minute since I have made videos for you guys. Life has gotten a little bit crazy and I'm finally getting the chance to sit down and make this video for you. Today we are gonna be talking about the top 10 things I used in my recovery after my tummy tuck surgery. So if you are new here, you may not know that I had a full 360 degree belt lipectomy which is basically a tummy tuck that goes all the way around, an entire lower body lift. I also had muscle repair of a 15 centimeter diastasis recti, and I also had a fleur de lis incision down the front, which is the vertical incision. To make matters fun or whatever, I added in a medial thigh lift because I was lifting the booty and the outer thighs. I decided to do also the inner so that everything would be nice and tight all the way around the bottom. And those are the surgeries that I was recovering from, so it was pretty extensive. So I feel like pretty much whatever um, plastic surgery you're going to be doing, especially if it involves any kind of a tummy tuck, this is all going to apply to you. So if you are looking into plastic surgery and you're trying to decide what are the most important items that you're gonna need for recovery, this is the video you're gonna wanna watch. So let's get started. Number one. Number one most important item that I could not have lived without and I'm so, so, so grateful that I invested in is my lift chair. This lovely lift chair <laughs> was my constant companion and place where I lived and recovered for a minimum two weeks post tummy tuck surgery. Um, with the lower body lift, I was able to sleep a little bit, maybe more flat than some people. So if you um, are gonna have just a regular tummy tuck, you might need something to go under your knees, like a wedge pillow or some kind like that. For me, this worked perfectly. I actually got my lift chair off of Facebook Marketplace. It was brand new, never used. The only thing that was wrong with it is one of the sides is a little loose and it never affected anything for me while I was recovering. And I got it for like $175. So you don't know what's gonna be out there. If your surgery is coming up in a few months, you have a lot of time to scour for a used lift chair, go check them out. Some of them are more plush than this one. This one was kind of puffy, but you know, I didn't really feel like I was uncomfortable at all. A lot of people say they can't sleep on their back and I usually am not a back sleeper, but I was able to sleep just fine in this thing. Um, at, about, I don't know, like, two weeks in or something, I finally got in my bed, but um, I bought a wedge pillow set for my bed and I actually never used it at all. But that is a good option for you. If you can't purchase a lift chair, a wedge pillow set might be a good idea for you, but you are going to need some place to recover that's gonna make things easier on you um, because you cannot use your core muscles at all. And the nicest thing about a lift recliner is that it actually stands all the way up. In fact, I'll just show you. So I've got this like handy dandy remote, right? And it goes really slowly. That was the wrong button. It goes really slowly. So it gently lifts you up as you're going in it. Trust me, you need it to go slowly. You don't want to be hopping out of the chair anytime quickly. But you can see how far up it goes. So it's easy to just kind of slip out that is the height that it goes to. So as you can see, at this point, you know, I'm practically standing up already. And so all I had to do was just kind of lean and then I was able to slowly stand up, which made me a lot, let's see, I'm gonna put this down. Let's speed this up. So having the lift recliner made me a lot more I'm independent. I didn't have to rely on someone to get me in and out of the chair. Every time I wanted to use the restroom, every time that I wanted to go walk around the room, right, to, to make sure I didn't get blood clots and things like that. Um, one other thing that I did use that I didn't buy is not on my top 10 list, but it is one of those leg squeezers. So I didn't have to get up so much the first night. They sent me home with one of those, 
where I just kept them wrapped around my legs. It was kind of a pain to have to unhook them and stop them from working while every time I went to the restroom. But I have to say like it made it so I didn't have to make myself get up and walk that first day, which was um, very important. But like I said, they sent me home with those. That's not something I personally purchased. They are available to purchase on Amazon though. So if you are looking for something like that, that's not on the list. So let's go back to the list. Um, there's lots of things I use that probably I could be on the list, including compression stockings, which is not on the list. Um, okay, the second one that I feel like was pretty vital for me was a walker. So I have my walker right here still. Um, I actually got my walker at the secondhand store. I went, I, I just happened to be there looking for something else and came across a walker, a shower chair. Um, what else? There was like three things I think that I got. Maybe it was just those two things. And I was ecstatic. I think I got it for like $5. Here it is without the thing. Um, but one thing that I found later that I wish I would have had from day one is this tray. I had such trouble. I bought myself a little, like, you can see this little rack over here with my popcorn on it. It still has some of my snacks that I ate way back then. It's still got, I just still using it for that. But I bought that little three tray thing, which is not on the list. Um, but it didn't come like where I could eat. It didn't scoot up next to me where I could eat. Um, someone suggested to me this walker tray and I wish I would have had that from day one because I think it would have made things so much easier. Um, you can pull it in, you know, right here to your lap and just eat. And I think that would have been ideal if I'd had it from day one. By the time I actually picked it up, I didn't really need it anymore and I used it a couple of times. Um, now I've just been using it to like put things on, like I had it by my door. It was just an easy place for me to keep things that I was looking for. Um, now that I'm kind of back to normal, I got to get this thing out of here and decide what I'm going to do with it. I think I'm just going to find somebody who is going to be doing loose skin surgery in the next little while and just pass it on to them. Okay, so that was number two. Number three is a weird one, but oh my heck, I was so grateful for it. Alcohol prep pads. But these ones are the ones to get. So do not get yourself those little tiny little square alcohol prep pads. These things are really big, okay? They come in a two pack, which by the way, that was annoying because often I would forget and I would open two of them and it would be annoying and I was afraid I would run out. I didn't run out. I used these from day one and I never did run out. I still have a few left. But, so I'm gonna open one and show you how big they are. So this brand is what? Winner. They are 50 pieces, six, basically six inches by four inches. They're 5.91 by 4.33. Now, why this is important is that I used alcohol prep pads to milk my drains. Made it super easy to keep it really, really clean. And they slide perfectly along the tubes. So you can see how big they are. Um, th these also I used when I was having nausea. Someone told me to sniff them. So, oh, <laughs> I still don't love that smell. But... I did that um, and it did help a bit with the nausea. So I used it for that and I also used it to milk the drain. So what I would do is I'd take these big things, right? And then I would fold them over the drain tube, hold the one side and just zip. And it made milking the drains so much easier and it kept everything cleaner. And I didn't have to think about like where's something to grab to milk the drains because your fingers can't just like slide along those super easily. Um, this made that chore very very simple clean and I didn't have to think about it. I can just grab them and do it so seriously they're on the list for a reason I use this a lot <laughs> drains are a pain anything that makes the drains a little easier to, to deal with it's worth buying okay the next one I actually could not find it I have searched and searched I cannot find it and it is antimicrobial wound wash I've shown it in other videos I know I have it. I used it just the other day. I don't know if someone has just like taken it and might be one of my older kids. I don't know. I couldn't find it in my bathroom ever, anywhere. I couldn't find it in my like recovery basket. Couldn't find it anywhere. So that was that paired with Hibiclens. Um, I used a ton. So the wound wash was really, really great for a couple of things. Number one, it made me feel like I could keep my wounds really, really clean even if I didn't shower. Number two, if I saw any red red areas, rather than putting like Neosporin on the wound, which would keep it kind of wet, which isn't good for that first those first healing days, you don't you want to keep it dry. 
um, the wound wash, I could spray it on and pat it dry. It would kill the germs and it would just fade away. Whereas like if I put like Neosporin or something like that, which I did buy and used a bit, um, that would keep it wet, which isn't good for healing. The Hippoclans I used both before surgery, which they did re recommend that I have. They gave me some, but I bought myself a bottle and after. And actually I'm still using it because it seems to like help with body odor and stuff like that. So does the micro antimicrobial wound wash. So if things, you know, are starting to get a little funky down there and you're not able to take a shower, I actually got better results feeling clean by spraying the antimicrobial wound wash in areas that were kind of getting iffy than like using the body wipes. I bought a whole freaking case of body wipes. I think I used one because it didn't clean well enough and then wound wash really really kills the germs so i used that a ton i still use it occasionally um i don't use it on my wounds anymore i use it for that other reason um and i will of course link it in the uh, description because i'll have all of these things linked in the description but yeah that one was a huge lifesaver and i don't know where it went and i'm frustrated about that okay the next one is Arnica, two different forms. You can see that my Arnica has been used and abused. <laughs> this is Arnica gel. I also took Arnica um, orally for a month after my surgery. Took it for helping with water, water retention, getting rid of that, you know, helping with swelling, but also helping with healing from the inside out. Arnica is great for bruising and healing. I put this all over where I had bruises. So I didn't do liposuction, and if you did do liposuction, you can't leave, live without this. Um, I didn't do lipo, but I still had quite a bit of bruising. I had a bunch on my whole left thigh, and I also had some on the back where my 360 went around the back. So you cannot put this on an open wound, but you can put it in all the parts of the skin around the wound, and it really, really helped to heal up my bruises and get everything you know healed from the inside out. I highly recommend getting some Arnica gel and pills. Definitely take those. Speaking of pills, the other pills that I took were the Heal Fast Vitamins. The only thing I didn't like about the Heal Fast Vitamins was that I had to take so many at a time because it was like five pills you had to take. And you're already taking, you know, like your pain pills. And I was also taking a cranberry because I was worried about my urinary tract infection that I got right before my surgery. And I was taking... Um, an antibiotic and I was taking like, I don't know, three different kinds of pain pills, maybe four, can't even remember now. And people were like thinking that that was what was causing the nausea was the vitamins. I guess anything's possible. Um, I only had the nausea like two really big days and then after that it went away. I, I never really did determine what caused that. So I really feel like the, the Heal Fast vitamins helped me um, really, really make that skin connections really quickly. Um, it's got all the things you need in it that you would normally take separately, including bromelain, which is supposed to help with swelling, and vitamin C, which is supposed to help with heals, with healing tissue and stuff like that. Um, it is expensive. I think I spent $100 for the pre and post um, vitamins. So if you don't wanna spend that much on vitamins, you know, I don't know that it's like 100% necessary, but I used it and I feel like I did it. I, I feel like it was really beneficial to my healing and healing quickly. I did not have issues with like open wounds and things like that, that a lot of people have had issues with. And so I think, you know, the combination of all the things I did were really helpful to help my body heal up quick. Um, another thing like in the bathroom area. So I've never actually used my shower chair for showering. I attempted to, but I guess I'm just not a sit to shower kind of person. I never had problems with passing out in the shower. I was able to shower alone really quickly and I was able to shower the next day. So that's another reason I didn't use the body wipes and things a lot is because I showered every other day because I was able to shower right away. My doctor let me shower next day. So I didn't use those as much as I thought I would. And I didn't use my shower chair because it just got in the way. I basically used it to hold my supplies, like my Hippoclans and things like that, and my shampoos so that I could reach them without having to bend over because some of mine are on the floor and I didn't want to have to reach up because some of mine are on the little hanging thing. So I kept them like right there, um, which made it a lot easier. And then of course I had it there just for safety in case I did feel woozy and had to sit down. But that did not happen to me. It did happen to people I know so you may want to have a shower chair 
either way, but I didn't use it as much as I use the handheld shower head. I never had a handheld shower head in there before, and I might take it out now because I can find it kind of annoying the way it, it doesn't really spray well for me to like shower under it without using the hand thing. That, but when I'm trying to like, you know, deal with washing things and rinsing things really, really well, the handheld shower definitely helps. That way, if I needed help from someone else, it probably would have been easier for them to help me with that too. I never needed help with washing my hair or anything. I had it really lucky. I did not have issues with the things that I thought um, I would use. Like I even bought a, shower, a tub one so that I would like be able to sit in a shower chair and just lean over and have Dave like wash my hair. Never had to do it, but I have it still not opened just because I bought it and I still have it. Um, uh, let's see another thing for the bathroom was my bidet sprayer It was literally one of those ones that you just attach to your own toilet Dude, that thing is awesome. Why have I never had this before? That made things so much easier if you know what I mean because I could rinse 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 and then I was able to just you know pat a little bit and I didn't have to stress about turning and reaching and you know all of that. I actually went from the front and was able to reach back. Everything was so swollen and pulled tight. Everything was kind of like open. You know what I mean? Made it really easy. <laughs> That's maybe too much information, but let's just say suffice it to say the bidet was a lifesaver. Um, I I didn't ever use the standing um, urinal. Um, that's going to be in another video, but I, I was grateful number one for the Walker because I used that to lower myself down onto the toilet and also for all of the muscle strengthening in my arms and the squats that I did before surgery, because if I hadn't had that strength to lower myself slowly down, the thighs would have killed me. I was so afraid I would sit down too quickly and just like pop open the flat thighs. And even though the doctor swore to me that could never happen, he's like, that will never happen. Never. He like assured me a million times. He's like, trust me, it's not happening. I was so paranoid about it and it still stung, stung, stung. So I needed to go down really, really slowly. And the walker and the bidet saved me in the restroom area. Um, another thing that really... Um, helped in the restroom area was one I didn't really know that I needed and I was so glad I got one of you sent me these really awesome microfiber towels um they're really like fluffy I have washed and washed these now I mean they're looking kind of dingy and then they did when I first got them um I actually got well I, I added these to my wish list and someone bought them for me I probably wouldn't have bought them and I'm really grateful that I had these so I actually highly suggest buying a set of white microfiber towels. I will link the ones I got in the about section below. Um, these saved me and I'll tell you why. Number one reason, when you're showering after surgery, especially if you still have your tapes on, you're supposed to pat everything dry and then wait for the tapes to dry all the way. So this microfiber made padding to dry so much easier. It's so much more absorbent than a regular towel. And I was able to pat everything dry super gently. It was soft and it was white so I could bleach it if I wanted to, to make sure it stayed super clean. I didn't do that. That's part, part of the reason I wanted white, um, but I never really bleached them. But I did wash them separately with my like garment, th garment things and things like that. So I kept them separate from everybody in the family. So I had my own towel that was life-saving and you know what I like them so much they're still on my wish list someone just bought me some turquoise ones and they are just like they're just awesome that's all I have to say they're awesome so I highly recommend getting those because it's really really difficult to just air dry also I used the um, hair dryer on a low cold setting um, especially on my tapes when I had my tapes I only had my tapes for about a week but you know, every time I would shower and they would get wet, I would use the, I would gently use the cool setting on the hair dryer to help after I pat it dry with my microfiber towels. Another restroom bathroom item that I used that was absolutely vital was a lanyard. I know that is like incredibly odd. I actually bought like a pack of six or something like that and I ended up using quite a few of them. I think two of them still are in the package, but I, ended up using one of these every time I took a shower. So I would just put it around my neck after I got all undressed and I would clip or pin the drains 
onto this so that I could shower without pulling them by accident or like, you know, grabbing them on the door on the way out or like having them drag on the floor and accidentally pull. This was probably one of the most important things in the restroom area. So I had my little, my little combination of things that I used to make showering easier and this one was very important. All right, so those are the top 10 things that I use. I use so many more things. I decided to throw in a couple of extras. I have a whole video about compression that you probably have already seen. Um, my Fajas were vital. The one, number one thing I like about this brand, this is Isabella, and my doctor actually put these on me and gave me additional ones as I got smaller. Um, as my sir, as my swelling went down, he gave me more of them for free. It was included. The number one thing was the huge <laughs> potty hole. I cannot even tell you how important it was to be able to just sit down, use the restroom, and know you weren't going to wet yourself all over your gar garment. That was vital to me. Morena and Isabella both have this big, huge opening, and the fabric is really good. It, 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 I, they're vital. This and lipo foams, coupled with lipo foams, which originally I did not buy lipo foams, but my doctor actually put one, kept everything really smooth, and I could adjust the amount of compression based on how many foams I put in. So when I started getting the garment started getting a little too big and loose, I was able to put in more foams. Now they did end up causing me a rash. I don't know if that's because I didn't throw them away and get a new. Maybe it was bacteria somehow in it. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I did end up using lipo foam and I didn't think I would since I didn't have lipo, but I did. I used it a lot. And those are that's a one bonus set. And then the second bonus set was protein snacks. You guys know how much I love these. I'm always talking about them. And other protein snacks like Quest Chips. There's also some like um, protein puffs that Walmart sells that I used a lot. Protein snacks saved me because a lot of times I didn't really feel like eating and trying to get the amount of protein that you need to heal is really, really hard. I don't even know how many Bilt Bars I ate in a day. It was a disgusting amount of Bilt Bars. <laughs> they literally saved me. I ate them constantly. I also had protein shakes on hand, protein powder, and Dave made me some really great smoothies. I'm sure you guys saw it in some of my videos at the early, like what I was eating after surgery. But I highly recommend having a huge stash of protein snacks on hand so that if you don't have a good appetite or if you are unable to have somebody make food for you and you, you can have your little cart, that wasn't on my list, but is I did use it quite a bit, um, with all of your snacks and important things on there, um, then you can have something that you can eat that you know you're getting protein and tastes good and you know you can force yourself to eat it and you're getting like a lot of protein in one you know, you can have any kind of protein bars or whatever that you want, but these are the ones I like the best. So I do have a code for Built Bar in case you didn't already know, you probably did, but it's Keto Chaos. You get 10% off of every order all the time, anytime on BuiltBar.com. So if you want to buy some of those for your upcoming surgery, go order them. They're awesome. Every flavor is delicious. They taste like chewy caramel, chocolate covered chewy caramel, and they're awesome. All right. So I think that is everything. That is my top 12 or 13 or 14 or 15 list of things that I used post surgery. You guys know I bought a lot more than that. If you guys are curious to all the crazy things I bought, check out my playlist in the end card because it's going to have all the list of the videos I made and I made a video of all the things I bought for my surgery. And then these are the ones I used out of all of the ones. And then I will be also making a video about the top whatever things, I don't even know how many, I bought and did not use at all. So watch for that video coming out soon. And thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you all again soon. Mm -hmm.